Welcome to Clone Questions Live, episode 25, with me, Paul, your clone coach. I help cultivators make the best clones ever. And we're live every Friday here on Instagram. If you want to join the chat, if you want to get your questions in, if you want to request to join the uh, the live um, via Instagram, you could do so and join via video here. want to welcome everybody to, that's joining in here. Let me get this... Uh, See, see, see here. What size nursery are you? Hobby or commercial? Enter your guesses every week. One through 420 to win a quick guide. Welcome, welcome to everybody. I'm just getting this comment up here, pinned up. Let's see here. Nuggin Beans, what's going on? Owen Roots. Doing a lot of talking about the size of nurseries, uh, the size of nursery that you are, the operator, whether you're a hobby grower, whether you're kind of that caregiver level or whether you're a commercial level. Um, I want to get a better sense of the audience so that we could better cater the content, right? I think after a year or so of we're coming, we're coming close to a year of doing clone coach here, doing clone coach videos. So I'm, I'm kind of considering like, is this first year kind of season one where everybody get gets up to speed to a certain level, and then we keep increasing the the content and the information from there. But I'd um, love to hear your thoughts. If you guys want to join the live, you could request to join here. Um, we're also going to go over the questions from the stories, from my Instagram stories. We've got a few questions in there, so uh, we're going to go over those questions here in this episode as well. But if you have anything to light up and start uh, start the, the weekend off, your Friday evening, Friday evening for me at least in California, uh, go ahead and spark it up and join, join Clone Coach here. And if you guys didn't know, on clonecoach.com, it's starting to get beefed up a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but <clears throat> a lot of people ask me where they could get the some of the propagation supplies that I recommend. You know, do I do I recommend Zero Tall, Terra Grow? I'm like, yeah, I do, absolutely. I'm like, well, where can I get it? Um, they're like, what plugs do you do you recommend? What plugs should I buy? And are you able to sell them to me? So on clonecoach.com, there's now a tab called Propagation Supplies. That's going to send you on over to my custom page on growershouse.com, which is growershouse.com forward slash clonecoach, which is a, um, a nice summary of all of my recommended products from growershouse.com. And from there, that's the, my affiliate link so that uh, you could help support Clone Coach while you're doing some shopping for some propagation supplies. So if anybody out there needs and is shopping for propagation supplies or wants to know what are some items that Clone Coach would recommend as far as lights, plugs, um, trays, uh, root, root inoculants, um, I think that's the best price of Zero Tall that I've seen. I think it's $97 plus tax and shipping. $97 bucks for a two and a half gallon container of Zero Tall 2.0. I think that's the best price that I've seen anywhere. So go to clonecoach.com. Click the propagation supplies tab up top and you'll be directly sent on over to uh, my custom page on growershouse.com where you could do some shop in there and get probably the best price zero tall that I've seen um, anywhere, anywhere really. So everybody that's uh, letting me know here whether you're kind of a hobby, commercial, caregiver level grow. Um, we got some questions that were kind of tied to those specific segments. So we're going to touch into that there. But if you guys, as whatever level you're in, if you have any questions, what's kind of troubling you as far as your production goes, maybe training your staff, um, getting consistency, maybe for selling clones, are you getting the, the best dollar that you can for those clones? Um, are you maximizing the revenue in that nursery that you're operating? Anything like that. So if you have those questions and want to throw them into the chat 
or even better, request to join the live chat and uh, you'll pop up on Instagram only. You won't get you won't get, be on the uh, the rerun uh, on YouTube, but um, you could actually be on the Instagram. So I light this thing back up. So let's see here. Welcome to everybody, though. Let me know where you're joining in from as well. If you're in here, Mr. Shark Bite, Mr. Shark Bite says, "What is zero tall used for?" Great question. Zero tall is a fungicide, algicide, and bactericide. So it's basically used as a preventative and a treatment of any sort of pathogen pressure that you may be experiencing, be it algae, be it mold, be it powdery mildew, be it any sort of mycelium, any sort of fuzz um, that you could experience. Xerotol is there to prevent ideally and treat if necessary. I use it throughout the entire rooting process to keep my stems clean and free from any sort of uh, mold, pathogen, buildup, anything like that. So it's a, it gets used daily. It's a um, very fast acting chemistry, but as soon as it's dry, it's essentially done working. There is no residual. So that's why you could uh, spray it more frequently to make sure you're just keeping everything clean. So that's what zero tall is used for. It's a fungicide and it's uh, it's my favorite fungicide to use. Eddie Rosas 72 says, how do I keep stems green? Well, you start with st uh, green stems to begin with, right? So assuming your mother plants are solid green or as green as you could get them to be, with the Clone Coach SOPs, we keep them green throughout the entire rooting process. So if you're starting green and did going into a purple or anything like that, do yourself a favor and go to clonecoach.com. Tonight is the last day for 50% off. Uh, here we are, June 30th, 2023. The last day for 50% off on clonecoach.com for those uh, guides and SOPs. But we keep them green throughout the rooting process with um, the proper nutrient protocol. Let's see here. Marker Dillon says, hey, coach, when should I rewater easy plugs after the initial soaking? If you really want all the watering protocols, once again, go to clonecoach.com. I have it all summarized there for you, a nice step-by-step um, -step instructional guide. But essentially, it's about a week in, give or take. I mean, uh, easy plugs are a little bit shorter, if I'm not mistaken. They don't have as much like media, so it may be sooner. Um, but after that initial soaking, it, it's generally about a week in, give or take, you know, one or two days, top or bottom, depending on the size of media, depending on the dry back, um, the environment, so on and so forth. See here, Veterans Grown says, how do you control the heat on the top of rack when vertical growing? The only way to control heat is to eliminate it, get rid of it. Pull it out with a with a fan uh, or an exhaust or something like that, or uh, or you condition it, you cool it down. Um, but heat's always going to rise. So if if it's having that much of a significant change um, from your top row to your to your bottom row, then um, you might want to look at what other heat sources near that top level, be it a uh, a dehu, be it uh, lights, whatever that's really adding that much extra heat, because just from you know, running LED lights on a baker's rack, you shouldn't have a crazy increase in temperature on, on a single rack to, to say anything significant. So here we got Rhode Island in the house. Got the high desert. Torqued Farm says, any plans to release your gel, Paul? Taking it slow and steady, slow and steady. There are plans. But I'm trying to do my best to keep the overhead of Clone Coach to a minimum, right? This is like a real digital uh, type of business. And if I start manufacturing, packaging, bottling, shipping my own gel, that requires a decent amount of warehouse space, equipment, um, labor, uh, storage, you know, money to be tied up in inventory it takes it takes quite a bit of, of money. So I still plan on releasing 
a clone coach gel. I actually do have some more samples from another manufacturer coming my way. So Torque Farms and anybody else that has um, ran the previous gels and or is interested in running a uh, gel um, from Clone Coach, please shoot me an email with uh, some information about your nursery, your nursery size, whether you're a hobby, caregiver, or commercial, um, and some more information about yourself and obviously your shipping info. And as soon as I receive the, the newest samples, I will get more samples out to the team members. So I still want to bring a gel out to market. It's taking a little bit longer, which is fine. Got to be patient, right? Um, but I want to do it strategically to where the manufacturer does the heavy lifting as far as the infrastructure goes. And I do the my heavy lifting as far as the marketing and the um, you know community end of things and the content end of things goes. So win-win partnership, trying to work something out. But I got some more samples coming. So if you want a sample, shoot me an email with your nursery information, shipping information. And I'll get you a sample as soon as I can. So the Torqued Farms, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you trialed the last gel, right? If I'm not mistaken. Mr. Sharkbite, recommended dosage on Zero Tall 2.0. I got to put this on a t-shirt or something, man. Uh, I got to have its own guide for this, for this response here. Answer it probably every week. So that tells me something. That tells me you we, you need access to the information really easy. It's basically three different uh, dosages. Listening up, Mr. Sharkbite. I hope you're, hope you're still in here, Mr. Sharkbite, answering your question here. And anybody else that is um, wondering about Zero Tall 2.0 dosages. So one mil per gallon for a continuous use throughout your irrigation system and your doser system. That's to prevent biofilm buildup within your irrigation lines. And that's not enough to kill off any microbial um, inoculant within your root zone. One mil per gallon. 15, 10 to 15 mils per gallon is a preventative dose for both foliar sprays and your root drench dosage. So per periodic root drenches to kill off any sort of pathogen and to re-inoculate after the fact with another microbial inoculant, that's the dosage, 10 to 15 mils per gallon. On the top end, it's an ounce per gallon. I want to be exact, it's 37 and a half mils per gallon. That is the top end. That's recommended for foliar only, stems, nodes, uh, fan leaves, and hard surfaces. That's a little bit hot for a root drench, so I wouldn't do a root drench with that, but any sort of um, daily normal sprays, you can run an ounce per gallon and just keep everything at bay. Just digits and me says I've got eight trays that are looking pretty rough. If you want to have me join you, we can go over it together. You got eight rough looking trays. Not a problem, man. Join request to join the chat. We'll take a look. And if you got, look guys, if you, if you got eight trays, I guarantee you, you'll make your money back on the clone SOP after the next round. You'll make your money back within a hundred, a couple hundred clones with the amount of value and the, the increase in plant health and um, increased success rate and everything else. So if you're doing, if you got eight trays pumping, you're right at that level where it's, it's worth it to you to grab the SOPs. Got a question here. Let me catch up here, guys. Someone says, are you pHing zero tall? Not with, uh, I don't use RO water with zero tall. I use like a filter tap. And um, I check the pH, but I don't really need to adjust it too much. Let's see here. Got the request coming in. I'm accepting. It might take a second to to join in there. Hey, there you are. How are you, man? Right on, man. What was your name? Nice to meet you, Joe. Let's see here. What's what's? It's the soothing sounds of a grow room, right? It's our, it's our black noise. So I cut these eight days ago. I cut them from mothers that are about three and a half hours from the root of this row here. 
Okay. I soak them in a solution of Athena Cleanse at five mils a gallon, and then a Bloom solution at five point at one point seven BC and five point five pH. And I'm having Ooh. Yeah. really gnarly. So how were they looking on the moms when you cut them? Probably about eighty percent. No, they were green. Every, everything was not brown or yellow like it is now. Everything was green. So if you look at the C, I did have one cultivar that did have very purple stems coming in. Right, right. This is what I've had the, the highest failure rate. So what happened after you cut them off the moms? I know there was some travel involved, but like, were they put in a cooler? What, how, what was that life like for them for that little while? I put them in 2,000 milliliters, 75 cuttings per mm -hmm. each, each one of these. And I had them pretty long. You know, they were about that long, and, and they were trimmed down. The leaves were cut down, all the nodes were cut down. So then when I got the deer, I could just cut them with a, uh, a scalpel. Yeah. I dumped them in some, uh, some dip and grow uh -huh. and then plugged them in the cubes. Okay, so, so there, there should be no concern with what happened from cutting to the, the travel time. Um, no, because I, I did something previous to that where I lost my whole batch of leaves of, of pathogens. Uh -huh. This is the first run that's turned out like this. Everything else has been green and luscious and still in roots and everything else. And I just, you know, that, that's a big problem. I mean, the, uh, you're day eight, right? You said? I'm sorry, say that again? You're, you're on day eight? So, I mean, all that, all that embolism and damping off and all that, uh, you know, rot and wilt happened that first five days, really. Um, and if, and if they're happening to that degree, I bet you, if you, if you grabbed and shook the tray and shook the little canopy of stems, you would still find some more to fall over. Um, yeah, like, like straight up, just like shake the tray. Yeah, that brother, that's that's rough. Um, well, look, a couple things. Cleanse is it's it's not like a fungicide. It's 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 not going to prevent any pathogen pressure. It's not going to prevent or kill like like a fungicide would. Does it have some properties to that degree with the hypochlorous acid? Yeah, but if it was strong enough and did that specific job. Um, directly it would be labeled as such just uh, an fyi right like that cleanse isn't doing any sort of pathogen prevention especially if you got this degree of wilting happening so um hence that zero tall yeah zero tall would would be the the proper choice when you want to prevent any sort of um you know stem rot anything like that um but there looked like some The, the uh, what you're experiencing? Yes. Yeah, there's definitely some rot at play. Um, what was that first week like with the temperature swings, highs and lows, and humidity swings, highs and lows for uh, for those domes? And what was that dome protocol like for them? So the, dome, the, the room stays very steady at about 83 Fahrenheit and about 70 uh, relative humidity. Steady, um, okay. The domes stay on. Okay. It's funny. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that reminds me of the, the last commercial greenhouse I was at. Um, 
award-winning cultivators. You know, they grew the uh, best flower. But, you know, I joined their team, and their clones were, were suffering, man. But they, they would take the domes off uh, one, one day in, one or two days in, and um, about the same parameters as you just mentioned. And we wouldn't be transplanting anything with roots. It would, like, be really hard to find roots. They would, they would all wilt up from the lack of uh, humidity, um, like, balance, and they would get the dried-up leaves, how you're seeing there. Um, you know, get more wilt and stuff. I, I did my protocol in the same room side by side, and it was like night and day difference. He was so scared of having the domes on for multiple days, but with the right protocols, it produced a better, healthier um, piece of material, plant material, than removing that dome right away. And like, just like, it'll take, it'll stay rigid, but you know, not really. Um, okay. So it's, it's uh, it, the, the dome protocol there there's good ways to get better results with it versus just taking the domes away early, early on. Um, okay. And that, that's a little counterproductive towards what you hear or not counterproductive, but counterintuitive to what you hear a lot nowadays, which is keep the humidity high in the room and get the domes off, get the domes off. Right. Cause you don't want, you don't want the humidity too high to get them uh, dependent on humidity. And things exactly. Like that, right? Yeah. And you know, ideally I like to harden them off to something that's a little bit drier so that no matter where they go, well, a couple things, wherever they go, they're going to be just fine. They're going to get a little bit more humidity, they'll be booming. If they get a little bit less, they're, they're already hard enough to, to, for that stress. And second, you'll get uh, at least one solid dry back at the end of that rooting process in that cloning media to really kick off the amount of roots in that cube. Like really one big solid dry back before day 14 as well with that drier um, environment. Um, so if you could maintain temperature and humidity, shoot it down to 80. You don't need the extra temperature. Shoot it down to 80. Um, be like at 66 to 69 percent humidity. And um, you know, I'll, I'm gonna shoot you a free 14 day quick guide, which is just the 14 day dome protocol. It's a snippet from the full SOP, um, and you could you could see the results in 14 days whether there's improvement or not. Uh -huh. And I've always done smaller batches for my indoor and had really great success. I ramped it up big time for an outdoor rosin thing, you know what I mean? And it just, like I said, got three rounds in, and it's just like, okay, I, I need you know, to tighten things up. You've been a great help, brother. I really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you, man, and I appreciate uh, Dankum as well, man. You know, he – he got he got the SOPs without me knowing when I first came out with them and ran them and just like one day like hey man it worked <laughs> you know it worked so um but yeah man shoot me a DM please do let me know you joined this this live here and I'm gonna get you a free copy of that quick guide put that into play um, you'll see you should see difference in 14 days and if you want to dive deeper man I'm sure I I, I know we could address all those uh, problems you got going on with those clones and get you better results. Sounds good, man. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Yeah, same to you. Take it easy. Later. Right on, guys. Right on. Let me catch up on the chat here. Shout out. What did he say his name was? I think it was Joe. I forget. Sorry, man. But uh, shout out to you for joining the live. He had some issues with um, burnt leaves, yellowing leaves. Um, Soggy stems, um, just just folded over stems on on probably thirty percent, twenty five, thirty percent of of the stock, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna get him some results. Keep keep posted on that. Umbrella Trellis says I found out about you through Mister Growitz show. If you guys haven't seen my episode with Mister Growitz, please do. It was like almost a year ago now. Early. <laughs> early in clone coach's career of being on camera and where to look at during interviews. I had the position down here, but I was looking at him on the screen instead of at the camera. My eyes were all funky the whole time. It's, it's funny, funny to look back and, uh, you know, see the growth, right? Tubby NXN says just bought the guide 10, 10,000 clones a month and looking to improve. You're going to improve 10,000 clones a month. You got the clone coach SOP, the best clones ever SOP. 
With that amount of clones, you probably want to pair it with the mother plant SOP as well to ensure we're getting the best mother plant start. Um, but glad to have you on the team. Reach out with any questions and we're going to get your results. Alan up north says, does the SOP stay the same with taking clones from outdoor plants or is there extra precautions I should take? As far as just the material from an outdoor plant and taking that and rooting it in the dome and in, indoors, there really is, is no difference. The, the starting material, the mother plant material, as long as it's healthy and um, as long as it's healthy and vibrant, you just want to, there's no issue there. The extra precautions would come into more of a factor of pest and disease prevention and management because outdoor plants are more susceptible to more, pre more insects, so they might have more insect pressure. So your IPM protocol for the rooting process and the initial dunk on the stems before they get plugged may differ, and that's where you may have um, some extra precautions. Torque Farm says, sign me up. Last Joe was great in my opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Umbrella Trellis says, is Sanidate 2.0 the same thing? No. Sanidate 2.0 is not the same thing as Zerotol 2.0. Sanidate 2.0 is only for hard surfaces, hard surface sanitizing. Zerotol 2.0 is plant safe and could be used for hard surface sanitizing. So if it does no damage to hard surfaces, but it's plant safe. Zero tall, or I'm sorry, Sanidate 2.0 is only for hard surfaces. Do not spray your plants with Sanidate 2.0. Good question. Let's see here. Let's see, let me catch up on the questions here. Torque Farm says, any cautions when using zero tall and cleanse? Don't use them together. There's just stay away from just use one or the other. Any plans to release your gel? We hit on that. Torque Farms questions from stories. My grow blocks are turning green. That is algae. Use zero tall 2.0. Prevent it. It's always better to prevent the algae than try to treat and eradicate the algae. Prevention is key. Another question from the stories is wilting or pathogen pressure in the first few days in the domes. I think this is on the commercial end of the questions that are popping up here from the story. So commercial operators are asking some problems that they're dealing with is the algae. Wilting or pathogen pressure in the first few days in the domes. Solve that. I solve that with the clone coach SOPs. If you're having any wilting in the first five days of your reading process, any wilting or any pathogen pressure, any stem rot, any folding over, that's solved with the clone coach SOPs. Let's see here. Let me catch up on the chat here. Make sure to enter your guesses, one through 420, to, for a chance to win at the end of this episode, a free copy of the 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com. If you haven't joined the team yet, clonecoach.com has a 50% off sale that ends tonight. Tonight. So all those in the live, if you're on the fence about it, don't be. Join tonight and take advantage of the 50% off sale that ends tonight. Let's see here. AV1 says, would you recommend Veg Push or a similar product? I mean, there's a lot of good nutrients out there. You know, it's 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 so dependent on your operation, on your size, on your budget, on your uh, uh, location, your accessibility. But you really can't go wrong with with most any base nutrient as far as the base nutrient goes. Just feed it the right levels, you know, read what your plants are saying so they get the right amount of nutrients from your base food and you should be fine. Mr. Sharkbite says, have you ever heard of more? If you have, can, I, can you explain the usage? 
I have I've heard of it, but I've never used it and I don't know the usage. Let's see. Let me catch up on the chat. I don't know how far, far back I am with the chat. No domes. Okay, so I'm catching up on uh comments on when we got that live request. Do, do, do. Let me catch up. Yep, yep, we got a, good, a lot of good comments here from when we had a nice team member, future team member, show us some problems they were having with their clones. Blackleaf LA, what's going on? Blackleaf says, love what you do, bro. Appreciate it, appreciate it. I want to get better, so feedback from everybody is much appreciated. Um, this is kind of version 1.0. This is like the first season, the first full year of Clone Coach doing his thing and the community liking what Clone Coach is doing. So any feedback is good because you guys kind of cater, you know, what you want the content to, to end up looking like. Ariel Kursky, current sky. I can't get these handles sometimes. We do says we do three days on, then crack the vents, and then take them off. A lot of people do that. I don't do that. I've just seen better results by not doing that. Let me see if I get more questions from the stories. Where's the rest of the questions from the stories? Oh, I think since I had multiple questions, it only grabbed the ones from the last questions let's take a look here let me catch up on this chat i forget where i am set a date stay just be careful we send a we're cleaning after the fact ariel Kur, kurinsky says can you put zero tall in the clone dunk you could absolutely dunk your stems with into zero tall that's what i do prior to plugging Absolutely. Eric Eric Ando 20 says, is there any harm from having your mother room on a different light cycle than your clone room? Both are 18.6, but different times due to power. Good question. Eric Ande, Ando wants to learn, wants to know more about the different light cycles from mother plants and your clones. I've ran the majority of my nurseries with the mother plants and the clones in, this, in the same room. And my mother plants would always be like on an 18-6 light cycle. So they would have a lights off period. My clones are on 24 hours. They never get a lights off period, but they're in the same room. Some people like lose their minds when it comes to, well, what you're going to trigger, you know, it's going to stress. Is there an issue? Uh, you know, pre flower this. I'm just like, no, dude. The ambient light in the room does what? What is it going to do? To create more vegetative growth? That's all. The plants in a vegetative state. Any bit of light, any bit of extra light, will just trigger more potential, more vegetative growth. But the ambient light from clone lights across the room is not enough to trigger extra growth on your mother, mother plants, and it's not going to trigger pre flowers. It's not going to trigger the plant to flower um, either way, because it's still enough, plenty of light to maintain the vegetative state. So a lot of people freak out with having the lights off on the moms with the clone lights going 24 hours, but there is no issue, guys. There is no issue with that being the case. Let's see here. Oh, you meant the plugs? You could do the plugs. As a pre-treatment, some people have been doing that pre-treatment. Some people have been boiling plugs, but you could use zero tall 2.0 either at the 10 to 15 mil root drench dosage or the strongest 30 mils per gallon um, dosage rate to you know kill off and basically you know start sterile, start your plug sterile, and then you would want to re-saturate and re-inoculate. In my opinion, um, moving forward from there. Hopefully that answered your question there. Remember to get your guesses in because at the end of this episode in about 20 minutes, you're going to, 
I'm going to do a giveaway for a free copy of the Fortune Day Quick Guide. So enter your guess, the number between 1 and 420. Motaponix420 says, any issues while taking with taking clones during the lights off period on mother plants? That's a good question. The only potential issue is you don't have um, starting material, be it your clones, that are coming in in, in, a, in an upright praying fashion as if when the lights are on. So when the lights, when the lights are off on mother plants, most of the time you're going to get the plants to droop. The plant material will droop. So you start with droopy, droopy clones in your domes. And to get them to re-perk back up, it's a bit of, bit of a process. And I, I don't think you successfully do so compared to starting with a vibrant, upright starting material. You can, you can maintain that rigidity and the upright you know, position of the stem throughout the rooting process. So I think that's the biggest issue with taking clones um, off of mother plants during the lights off period is that they'll start, more often than not, they'll start droopy because the lights have been off and then they kind of stay droopy. Let's see here. Moving on through the questions. Clone Questions Live, episode 25. If you guys want to catch the other 24 episodes, go to my YouTube channel. I've got the full, unedited, uncut versions of Clone Questions Live episodes, all the episodes. So just go to youtube.com, search Clone Coach, and you'll find the full length episodes of all the Clone Question Lives. D. Benevnuto, I can't read that, says, what is your ideal root zone temperature? Ideally, it's about 72 to 74, 72 to 75 degrees is usually Fahrenheit, is usually the ideal root temp. Uh, 420XMA says, Edis. S.S. Migayo. But yeah, so. I know there was a lot more questions on my Instagram stories. Let's see if I could get them from the desktop. But it might not. It just shows my damn it. I don't see the stories there. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to do another live or something. Get the rest of those questions. There's a lot more questions that came through the stories, and I thought I could get access to all of them. But I only got access to the last three. The last three. But that got me thinking too. I back to like what I what I was talking about earlier in the in the in the, in the episode is twenty five twenty five episodes of Clone Questions Live. We're in we're 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 this deep. Twenty five episodes. There's a lot of and each of them are an hour long. An hour long, 25 hours worth of content of questions. I think that should be, this might, you know, 25 is a nice round number. So I think this might be the kind of, you know, getting close to an end of a season and kind of summarize season one kind of as the 101. Um, and then we could kind of build off into season two and dive deeper into other segments and other portions of, uh, you know, the nursery space, the nursery business. Um, you know, nursery as a, as a small business, as a side hustle, as a commercial business, um, visit a lot more commercial operations, things like that, which that's what excites me a lot. It's like the commercial operations of nurseries. That's, that's some fun stuff. Let's see here. Welcome to everybody though. That's still here joining in the live episode. Let's see here. 
Bear Trap. Looks like you're trying to join in. What's going on, Bear Trap? Usually a second or two. What's up, man? Guess not. <laughs> Everybody saw Bear Trap, though. Um, D. Benvenuto says, do you prefer cutting, cutting from herding? Do you prefer cutting from large mothers or smaller moms and chain cloning? Good question. I do have a preference. I do prefer smaller moms, like moms that are maybe four feet from top to bottom, right? Just short stocky but really bushy and noty um tops and clones and uh, on these mother plants i don't want to plant a mother plant that's like in a seven ten gallon pot that's taller than me that you know is so top heavy that i could i i wouldn't be even like be able to bring it down from the table to the floor to work on it and clone from it or if it's already on the floor like i need a step ladder to clone from it it's just unnecessary in an indoor environment. Greenhouse or something, maybe, sure. But, um, you know, indoor, smaller, manageable moms that you could, that will end up being rotated more often. And you won't feel that big dip in production when you rotate in new mother stock. If you plan it right, like the best mother plants ever, SOP from clonecoach.com teaches you. You could have the next set of moms ready to go when you're retiring the old set so that there's a minimal dip in production of your of your nursery stock. Because if you have really giant mother plants and you replace those mother plants, you you would once again you have the, the plants that are replacing it with would need to be the equal size to get the equal production off of it. So I prefer smaller, manageable mother stock that you could rotate more often. And it's a lot easier for any staff to to work on the mother plant. Mr. C. Groen says, I've watched all the episodes of Clone Questions Live. He appreciates them all. Hell yeah. 25 episodes, man. Super Supermoon Seedco says, remember when the Dutch dudes flew out that one Dutch dude for SOP? What are we talking about here? Is it Supermoon Seedco, is that we met in person? Is that something that happened at a grow? Because I do know some Dutch people, but I'm not sure if you're re talking to me there. Corey ETH, ETH says, thoughts on Hormex products? Which ones? Which ones specifically? Uh, let's see here. Beachicano 420 says, in the 25 episodes, he has gave out his full SOP in just answering questions. Gracias por todo. De nada, señor. De nada. The Benvenuto says, killer response. Bear Trap Garden says, the coaching call is so awesome. It has so much value. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bear Trap Gardens. Supermoon Seed Co. Grow Shop Hydroponics. Yeah, they got sold pretty quick, huh? But yeah, I don't know how sex successful the, the greenhouse in the desert was. You know, it's a little tough. Yeah, you're at Super, Super, Supermoon Seed Co. I mean, I, the handle really sounds familiar. Um, but it's been a while since I've been out and about hitting all the hitting all the grows, you know. So, but I never forget a face. Yeah, yeah, dude. Desert, desert greenhouses, poorly constructed greenhouses in the middle of the desert. You know, the real estate developers really got the one up on all the operators on those deals, right? I mean, these real estate deals just big money up front and poor execution, poor infrastructure, poor construct. Just tough, 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 tough. Oh, neotite. Phenotype. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Been a while. Been a while.
Are you in the seed business, my friend? You want to drop some knowledge on the seed business here? You want to drop some knowledge uh, on some breeding? I'm, I'm making some seeds here. You want to share some knowledge? Fakadi says, what's my boy smoking on? Smoking on some, I think my buddy called it, beebs. The beebs. Got a little. I'm at the end of it. I'm at the end of it. Do it no justice. But it smokes. Let's see here. Mr. C growing for B says clone rack. Do I need the metal baker's racks or can I use solid metal shelves? Good question. You could essentially use any sort of rack. Just the, the metal bake, baker racks are always cheap and um, available. It didn't really draw any suspicion. And the dimensions are always spot on. So the dimensions are more important in my opinion. Um, most of them are going to be 48 inches wide. So you could fit four trays across. But some of them are only um, 18 inches deep or 20 inches deep, which is like right on the edge of the size of the tray. So it doesn't, like it either sits up or down from the back lip. Um, so if you get the 24 inch deep, the true two foot deep, then you don't have that problem. Um, bigger than that, or the odd size where you can't fit solid amount of trays back to back or maximize the tray space. That's really my, my what I'm looking at is the dimensions and the measurements and maximizing the trays and the, the even distribution of the four foot strip lights as well. So don't get like a six foot wide rack when your lights are only four foot wide. You're gonna have an offset thing, you're gonna have these weird things going on. Four foot wide dimensions or eight foot wide, you know, dimensions um, to make sure you get the light coverage. Supermoon Seed Co. says, I'm down. I'll come on your next live. My shit's going to die. No problem, man. Well, you guys heard it here. Whoever's watching this live right now, next week, you might catch some breeding, some seed information. So anybody interested in that, got to join the live next week. See if Supermoon Seed Co. is able to join us. Let's see here. But I appreciate you, man. See, like, in this space, I remember... <laughs> remember when I first started making clones and going to every single dispensary out here in the Coachella Valley and getting the appointment, making my way, showing up, waiting in the lobby with boxes of clones just to show them what I was about. Just how to get in the door, meet with somebody, show them my product, show them my clones, show them that what I would tell them is like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm always going to be associated with clones. I'm always going to be putting my best foot forward trying not to um, do shady things or, 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 you know, purposefully tarnish my reputation. I was like, I value that shit. I'm going to be around for a while and, you know, go around to every single dispensary and, you know, give them this speech. And there's still people that I've met throughout the years that, like I said, I've never done, you know, mal it, malicious things and malintentioned things. And, you know, I'm in it for the long game. Not perfect, but uh, I'm in it for the long game. So I've still got relationships with people that I've met years ago since the 215 days, you know, so it's really cool. Let's see here. Get your guesses in. We got about a few minutes to get your guesses in. Whoever's going to win this week's free giveaway of the 14 day quick guide from clonecoach.com and once again the 50 percent off sale ends tonight y'all it ends tonight 50 percent off clonecoach.com ends tonight but we're gonna have to do more so i think this like maybe the next version of the lives is gonna be like interview style because i already got about eight interviews recorded and edited that I'm 
uploading to my YouTube channel. So maybe that, you know, gets transitioned into a live, live episode. And that's how the lives evolve. Not sure. But I will be getting your opinions via via the stories on, um, you know, how the next evolution of, of these episodes and all this content should go. Mr. C. Growen, 4B. I love the participation, man. You're a true team member of Clone Coach, and I appreciate you. If we ever meet in person, please remind me of who you are, and I'd love to burn one with you. Um, let's see here. You say... Do you know if we need a cannabis license to sell clones? They're not handing out licenses in Washington State. I was thinking maybe hemp license. Very good question. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I can't tell you, you know, you can't go tell them that clone coach told you this was possible or whatnot. But hemp is one thing. So federally, if your state has a hemp, program or a department of agriculture um, permit process for hemp you would need to be compliant with your state agriculture agricultural department for hemp whatever procedures policies uh, permits licenses they have in place with your state once again being compliant with your state allows you to be compliant in the eyes of the feds with the u.s farm bill so that you have to be compliant with both you can't just operate and say yeah I got immune, uh, immunity or whatever. Once again, I'm not a lawyer. Maybe a lawyer could defend you, guide you differently. I don't know. But um, I know that much. But there's that gray area of like, well, according to the rules, you know, just plant material, once it's dried, has less than 0.03% THC. So it kind of lands as hemp. But it's the gray area that we're in right now. So if you want to be a cowboy about it, there's a lot of people being a cowboy about it. Um, do your thing. But properly with hemp and stuff, you should follow your state's hemp program, and then you should be good. Or, you know, do what most Americans in this country have done, which is start in the black and gray market. <laughs> make your make your money that way and reinvest into the white and legal market and uh you begin some generational wealth off that shit do what most people most americans have done in this country you know mr shark bite says I know for a fact you need a producer's license. Yeah, it depends on each state's law. Requires license in uh, ME, Maryland. Gifting is a gray area. There's a lot of gray. You see, that's another big point. With the nursery space, from the very beginning, it's always been a very underthought of, grayer area of uh, licenses of production. In California, the licenses for nursery the square footage cap didn't exist. It was unlimited when it first came out. Unlimited. Unlimited. Unlimited nursery stock production. That's what the licenses was allowed, allowing. Dude, with the nursery, there's, there's less eyes on the nursery space. Everybody's focused on flower production and, and capping that and taxing that and all that stuff. So for better or for worse, sometimes the nursery space is always the the forgotten stepchild of it all so there's more there's more room to play there's a little bit more gray um but it kind of depends where you are but like usually size wise and production wise and stuff it's usually the best option available that's what i found from the very beginning dude nobody pays attention to the nursery space regulators barely regulate the nursery space taxes are hardly ever um, eligible to nursery stock sales. So it's usually wholesale and whatnot. So it was just so much better, dude, so much better. Mo Grown says, so how do you get a nursery license? I wonder, I heard someone had theirs before. Is it hard? What's the difference between regular growing and having a nursery? Well, there's a big difference between regular growing and having a nursery. Nursery is just vegetative stock that's um, produced without any flower production, basically. Um, 
but every location and place is different. Um, I think that's what I'll do is the nursery space is very interesting. I want to start making some, uh, the nursery business space is interesting. Um, cannabis lawyer. I could try to bring on a cannabis friendly lawyer to tell you more about the licensing process when it comes to hemp, when it comes to the nursery stock, the nursery business. So I'm going to reach out to a good friend, um, cannabis business lawyer. And I actually was on his podcast a while back ago. So go to youtube.com and search cannabis industry lawyer, clone coach. You'll catch my episode with him and um, I'm going to try to get him on the show and get all of these nursery specific um, questions asked. What do you guys think about that? Let's see interview. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Nursery business. I mean, that's see, I, that's where I was thinking. That's like that season two. Get everybody up to speed. Like we've catered catering a lot to the people in the hobby and caregiver levels that are just up in their game, commercial levels that are up in their game. But once everybody has up their game what next right and the nursery business is an under talked about under discussed section of the industry and let's just start i'm just want i want to start diving deeper into that sector of the industry and have conversations like that bring on professionals like that visit facilities like that talk about the nursery business talk about semi trucks worth of plants being delivered that is what is possible and what is normal with the nursery space mass production acres and acres of production fulfilling the demand for all the cultivation sites as possible so i'm i'm going into start touring some nurseries and start start talking the nursery business so stay stay tuned stay posted if you want to learn more about the nursery business shoot me a dm and with the words nursery business we'll get you on a quick list to uh, be the first to start finding out about everything. So everybody's guess has got to be in. We're going to do a random number. We're at the end of the show here. We're going to do the the giveaway for the 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com. We're going to pick a random person, a random number, and whoever got closest without going over in the chat will win a free copy of the best of the 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com. Once again, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching episode 25 of Clone Questions Live. If you want to catch all the full-length episodes, go to my YouTube channel. If you want to check out more um, podcasts and interviews that I've been on, just so search me on YouTube. I've been on Mr. Grow It, Cannabis uh, Industry Lawyer, Cut the Check Podcast, a bunch of them, a bunch of good ones. So, Bear Trap Guardian says, is the best mom... Ever guide show good topping and super cropping instructions. Yes, it does. It's a foundation of maximizing your clones per square foot production on your mother plants. So it absolutely has that schedule and that technique done to maximize the clones per square foot. The best mother plants ever. SOP from clonecoach.com. Bear Trap Gardens. Check it out. 50% off clonecoach.com ends tonight, y'all. Ends tonight. That's it. Ends tonight. So here we go. Giveaway time. We pick a number between 1 and 420. Got the random number generator here. Click generate. Then I'm going to go through the chat and find ourselves a winner. But there's a lot of more content on YouTube, guys. I got all 25 episodes of Clone Questions Live all an hour long. I've probably been on a dozen different podcasts. So search me on YouTube and that's another 12 hours, 10 hours worth of content. So let's find our winner here. Number two, one and 420, here we go. 366. 366 is the random number. Let's find our winner. 366, 276, nope, 112, 419, 275, 153, 11, 17, 223, 326. I think I find closer than that, 366. 
Let's find our winner, guys. I'm going from the bottom up. So if you're entering your guesses right now, it's too late. It's too late. You'll catch it next week on Clone Questions Live. The random number is 366. I'm trying to not let my list come into play here. 366. Let's find our winner. 212. Nope. 27. Nope. 326. That's another one. So let's Mo. Mo grown. 326 is closest so far to 366. This week's random number. For a winner of the 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com. Let's see here. Find our winner. Where's the random numbers? Here we go. Come on. Where's the random? 189. Nope. 311, like always. Always so close. 385, just over it. 366. 5. Nope. 419. Nope. Let's see here. 38. Nope. 75. 278. 318. 376. Oh, so close. So close, but over. 366 is the number for this week, is the random number. 350. Ooh, that's that's in the lead right now. 350. No. No, so. Random fucking names. Um, 366 is the random number this week. 350 is in the lead. 350 is in the lead. Random number. Here we go. Let's find our winner. Who's going to be 350? Who's going to be 350? 366 is the random number. Get these emails out of my way. Yes, I know. Get these emails out of my way. 366 is the random number. 350 is in the lead. 222. Nope. It's fine. I'm getting close to the top here. 98. Nope. 349. Oh, nope. 350 is still in the lead. The random number being 366 this week. 350s in the lead. Let's find. Come on. 200, 248. Nope. Nope. Let's see here. 350s in the lead. Boom. That's our winner. Let me find that handle again. Let me find that handle. What's it called? No, me, no, my exotics or something like that. 350 was the winner. Let me find that handle. 366 was the random number. And then... No me exotics underscore is this winner. This week's winner. No, no my, no me exotics underscore is this week's winner. Congratulations. I'm going to shoot you a DM for a free copy with the discount code with a free copy of the 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com. Cheers to everybody. Happy Friday. We'll catch you guys next week on Clone Questions Live. Have a good night.